At the end of the lesson, you are expected to describe a good model, use loss function to define a good model, and appreciate the significance of loss function in defining a good model. So bearing in mind the situation we presented in our last lesson, so we made a model that could predict the amount of sales. So modeling the prediction is anchored on the values of W0 and W1 so which we can say the best values. So for better understanding of this lesson, I suggest that you should watch lesson number 17. The link is given in the description below so you would be able to follow through what this one means and what W0 and <coughs> W1 mean. Okay? So if we are going to define what best means, we should say that the values of W0 and W1 can result to a line that, pa that passes as close as, as close as possible to all of the data points. So let's look at this one, this illustration for better understanding of what I mean. So if we are going to draw a straight line, let me draw, okay, okay, just think this is a straight line, okay. So it is impossible to do it because the values are scattered. So, okay, so that means, what I mean here is that if you're going to connect all the dots here, then it would be impossible to make a straight line out of the dots, okay? So with this, the values of W0 and W or W1 can help us bring all the values to points now with that, a straight line, just like what I've drawn, can be drawn here. Okay, so in my case, or in our case, in our example, I have drawn a straight line using the values of W0 and W1. Okay, taking for example that the values for W0 and W1 are already given. So... The square difference, or anyway, so using W0 and W1, so it means that we are bringing all the values closer to this straight line. So for example, for this point, so we make it close to this one, this to this, this to this, this to this, and this to this, this to this, okay? So when we already have the values determined with W0 and W1, then we can draw a straight line. So the square difference is one of the common ways that is used to measure how close a certain model gets to data points. So using our example in lesson 17, it is the squared difference between the real business year let me write here year okay and the predicted business year of the model so this situation is represented by this statement so we have yn or year n minus the function that acts on x with parameters w0 and w1 so the result to this is squared so what is the implication if we have a smaller or bigger numbers in this case after we've squared? So what could be the implication? So if it is smaller, smaller, then the model at xn, okay, is closer to yn. But of course, if it is bigger, it would be the opposite. So it means it is farther from yn, okay? So knowing this implication, why then do we have to square the difference? So if we are not going to do it, then there is no way we can reduce the quantity in one setting. Take note, this will be indefinite because we continuously increase the function of n that have parameters w and 
w0 and w1. So this expression is known as squared loss function. Let me write here. Squared loss function. Okay. So again, let me repeat that. If we are not going to get a difference then or square the difference what will happen is that we will continuously increase the value of this one okay so this is called squared loss function so what does what is this okay so squared loss function is expressed mathematically using this one so ln or loss for year n and the function that acts on xn with parameters w0 and w1 is equal to yn minus xn then with parameters w0 and w1 so what does the statement mean so this describes the loss of the year n So we, in this case, we have to take note that loss is always positive, okay? So here it must be always positive. Just like as we have said earlier, if the loss is lower, our function better describes our data. So obviously, if the loss is higher, then our function does not describe our data properly. So if what is involved, or if what is involved is a number of years what do we do here is that we consider the average loss across the whole data set so what we do here is we use this formula so considering the fact that we do not only just consider one value but we consider just for example the, the value for the whole year or a number of years so what do we do then so in this case, we use this one. So as you could see, we are getting the average. So we divide that by the number of times or the number of values that we have. Okay, so again, I want to highlight this. The lower the average loss is, the better. So what happens here is we tune W0 and W1 to make a model that results in the lowest value of the average loss L. Okay, this one. So if we would like to express mathematically how to find the best values for W0 and W1, then we have this expression, argmin W0 and W1, 1n, then as you could see, they are just the same, okay? So, what does the argument or argument mean? So, it means finding the argument that minimizes. So, in our future lessons, we will dive into this. So, please click the bell button and then subscribe. Subscribe first and then click the bell button so you will be notified every time we have a new session. So, the squared loss is the most common loss function due to the fact that it makes finding the best values w0 and w1 simple and straightforward so there are actually other types of loss function that can be used for your purpose so we have mean absolute we have here mean absolute then we have the log likelihood then we have the hinge and then we have the uber of course for today in our present times because we've already devised a lot of methods and applications to do loss functions or identify the loss functions then it would not be as complicated as before because today we can just use these applications to help us identify what a good model could be and how it would be applicable in our situations what is this for why do we have to study this loss function evaluates how well a certain algorithm models the data 
it also learns to reduce error in prediction. A lot of algorithms or machine learning algorithms use a sort of loss function in the process of optimization of finding the best parameters for the data. After all being said and done, let's try this. What is a squared loss function? How do we find the best value of W0 and W1? Leave your comments or your answers in the comment section below so we could discuss properly and we could learn from each other. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Please click the bell button to be notified every time we have a new session. See you in the next lesson.